<laughs> and on the other hand, uh, Xenia is working in the executive uh, body of power. Uh, so this is an excellent, excellent uh, person with a panoramic vision of law and business and uh, now has another aspect of uh, civil service. And Yaroslava Johnson is here who represents one of the big organizations involved in uh, donor resistance and uh, this is a specific body that is not just coming up with advice but also with certain um, funds. That concludes uh, our presentation so uh, we would like to uh, say this um, if we remember something else uh, important uh, will um, uh, do it in due course. What's the way for us to proceed? Every speaker, every panelist will get up to seven minutes uh, plus seven plus up to ten and uh, we'll be able to somehow manage the time and to express the opinion concerning specific issues. We have some issues very simple whether we need policy or don't need policy for support on small and medium enterprises and entrepreneurship and what kind of business should it be and why it doesn't work. We have a lot of talks but uh, we put questions um, along those lines. After the presentations we'll uh, have a smaller discussion, shorter discussion and uh, not just to listen and to speak up but we uh, communicate it with the panelists. It's very important to have the feedback. So I hope that in this discussion the floor will take the most active part and we'll put the questions and get some answers hopefully and immediately I would like to say that uh, the moderator, I love democracy but um, democracy that should uh, be beyond the um, uh, bounds of this of this of this of this audience uh, this is a very good comparison it's like Ukraine I'm not not a pre president yet but I behave like one so it's manage manageable democracy but at once I would like to say that there's this general uh, democracy and some exceptions exceptions or reservations so let's stick to the timelines respect to each other and be clear-cut in our questions so that we can uh, as much as possible communicate because communication is the most important and um, uh, enjoyable thing to happen to us uh, in, on this Saturday afternoon here in this beautiful hotel. So let's start from the beginning. Let's start with um, politicians, Alexander Kuzin. Quite frankly, it's very difficult for me to imagine how I can uh, stick to the um, time, uh, timelines. I have spent 20 years on the subject of SMEs. I didn't want to to join uh, Tamara Solanik this, uh, this event, but Tamara Solanik invited me. I came here not to say something. That's my uh, feeling. It's my vision. I've come to do one uh, single thing and voice one idea and uh, maybe develop some idea with your assistance. We have the set of questions for this panel. Um, uh, just SMEs, uh, all the countries in the world um, uh, would, wouldn't, uh, in, uh, you would hardly f find people willingly dealing with SMEs, but the middle class in Ukraine, we all understand, is the only, the only catalyst uh, and uh, the, only, the only measure to decide whether we have any development here. All the Maidans were around the middle class, whatever you say, that is uh, their revolution, their support, and their decision. So, you know, uh, people, and we know with Xenia that uh, politicians uh, hate to deal with SMEs because uh, this is not very rewarding. For the politicians, they never say thank you. They say you waste your time, you get you know, votes from that uh, department. 
they say, but uh, I have fought for 20 years for those people to vote for, for whom, who they want and who they prefer. This is the most challenging problem. And this is uh, the most important thing for Ukraine to have SMEs and the middle class for that matter. So what uh, uh, are we experiencing now? I'm in great pain right now. For 20 years I was trying to raise that issue starting with uh, Kuchma's presidency together with Ksenia and many other people who were, have been around and they are now being extinguished. In terms of finance, uh, more than 50 banks have been shut down. This is not the end of this story. This is death for the majority of SMEs because all the accounts that they had uh, are, and they perished now and there's no repay and that was their life 100,000 hryvnias for some people it's not money but for SMEs this is everything they have they cannot start from scratch uh, if you say that somebody comes to bank to the bank and has four to five percent of interest to start a new business to have be a start up again this is not available and has the change the system change for investors um, domestic and foreign investors is there any understanding of how to protect your ownership, your property, nothing has changed over this year. The same judiciary, the same prosecution, the same tax authority, exactly the same after the Maidan. And uh, whatever I try to do in terms of breaches, because business people come to me not just uh, through Facebook or email, they know my telephone numbers, practically all of them, but presently each time I read uh, their message, we uh, die and save our souls. And uh, uh, they said 50,000 hryvnias. Uh, and uh, people say, I, I used to have some um, background to use, some assets to use, but uh, now the tax authority is punishing me for the bank's failure. So I do not mention even Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, the hardships of war. And we had a special draft uh, being adopted in back in September. People who had uh, parcels of land at the airport, the tax authority would tax them, keep levying taxes. And I can tell you that it's very painful. The law was passed and the president signed it off, but the government adopted the resolution on the ATO area. It was um, that will come forth into uh, in three days into force. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, the law firms uh, won uh, the case where they. Uh, reverse the cancellation of that resolution. This is uh, the survival quest for the people uh, who are practically losing their business there. Do we need a special policy for SMEs? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in 2009, uh, Julia Timoshenko and myself, we signed, we joined the uh, European Memorandum that is called uh, think, uh, think About the Small Ones. And as far as I remember, there are nine, uh, nine or eight items. Each European country put their name to it uh, to comply with the conditions for development of SMEs uh, in their respective countries, favorable conditions. Economies that uh, are quite developed, but they are still reminding themselves and their politicians, all the senior officials and so on, that this is a priority, that this is a, a token of democracy. This should not be monopolized, that should not be uh, in the hands of any oligarchs, and they are drafting such memoranda in 2009. So it's not that simple. They're reminding themselves. So in the previous parliament, we started in preparation together with um, uh, the experts of a new law on state support for SMEs. I understand that the old one was uh, generated 10 years ago. All the approaches uh, changed. 
Mm, uh, it was an ideal we had to adopt it in the first reading to put together new people, new programs, new efforts, and I am thankful to the uh, MPs. They supported it in the first reading on state support of SMEs, it is called, and it's uh, in the transcript. Uh, it, now we took two or three months uh, to develop that draft to uh, make it a new constitution of SMEs. You're all invited to uh, uh, chip in. And uh, this uh, is uh, um, given to some Tomich MP, Mr. Carroll, and uh, he is a young man. I have spent on my uh, spent on my all my life, and uh, I may be uh, limited in my understanding, may be disadvantaged. And Tamara Salamik and uh, this person, I hope that the best outcome of your work will adoption of this draft and the second reading with a new impetus um, to make uh, this uh, the constitution of uh, SMEs with understanding what uh, uh, municipality is and who owes who. Business, uh, the authorities or the authorities or some something to business. The mayor of Baltimore in the U.S., I remember him, he said, I'm the best uh, entrepreneur in this city because uh, if somebody comes to me and wants to be a startup, I'll give him an office, give her an office um, with all the necessary infrastructure, even the fl uh, flower beds. Uh, you just create a couple of jobs for me. You just stay in my community. That's the dream I have for every mayor uh, not to be uh, besieged by business, but looking for businesses to support. I remember the times of uh, Kuchma as president, I was trying to uh, arrange it uh, so that uh, at least once a year the mayor remembers who is providing for the community, not the kickbacks, but uh, the revenues to the budget. And um, you're all invited. People with certain ideas, please help me with the um, creation of this draft, of the, of the making of this draft. There is a problem of uh, incompliance, the lack of implementation, but it's very important to have a document, to have that document. Should um, uh, we, what should we do and when? We at least shouldn't kill the existing ones, the still surviving ones. This is a matter of principle with me. Yesterday I was reading through it, so now this uh, Vienna Economic Institute, Institute of Economics has this report and they have their findings on the governmental policy and they're very serious about this uh, with the solvency and you understand the matter all the people involved in trade tax 5.6 for importation and with the solvency going down the tubes and uh, the system administration being unavailable and um, uh, the um, uh, bribes uh, still uh, persisting. And this is a problem for the service providers, uh, manufacturers. Uh, also, yesterday one manufacturer called me and said, uh, Madam Kujal, uh, two or three times a week uh, tax authorities come to us with their inspections of the documents. And they said that uh, we, they were quite uh, uh, calm about it, but somebody was uh, was uh, wanting something about them. They, somebody uh, desired their business, and uh, the most uh, important thing is the regulation. And like Senior Lapina uh, suggest and suggested, we will help in the following fashion. We will adopt the skilleting draft. What's the sense of it? Last time I really killed it in the previous parliament because um, uh, we cannot showcase to the, uh, the government whether they want to do anything, but I then understood that, that that wasn't to be blamed on the Ministry of Economy. Other ministries were not willing to do anything. Now we uh, have this new uh, law on uh, licensing of the minister witnessed the lobbyism and uh, uh, it, you know, licensing for firefighters. That was the most important thing they still kept.
and um, they still somehow smuggled it through some other faction. They said otherwise we wouldn't vote. And that was, of course, uh, the price to pay. But um, every, every, every change, every, um, every amendment has the price. But this is the pain that I, that, uh, I cherish. Uh, this is not... Uh, my being an agent of uh, the Kremlin. Uh, this is uh, the challenges, the challenge that I know about. So we need consolidation of um, our committee with the Ministry of Economy and the part where we uh, have the same feeling. This, we are on the same page, and this is very important. What we can do for them, last time I killed the draft and I believed in the new government uh, cleaning up the mess. Well, we had 113 permits cancelled for the agriculture, two certifications of green and uh, uh, green uh, silos, and $250 million a year. The agrarians uh, were drinking champagne, drinking to us. It was still Iran, and from the Ministry of Agriculture, also they came to them and said that what you paid for certification, now you have to uh, make this transfer to the insurance company. And ask them, why would you pay? And they say uh, they would keep our green at port. So hmm, I uh, asked the uh, business uh, community, what should happen unless we um, put uh, people behind bars, one or two? preferably three, and with your participation in this fight against corruption, we yesterday adopted in the first reading that uh, thing, and you take their word for it when they uh, do it, and this is criminal, criminal investigation without police, without the prosecutor's office. Straight to court, it goes. And my last uh, big request, I'm on the Facebook, very active. I, if you have any clever ideas and understanding of well, what should be done, because together with the Ministry of uh, Economy we are doing this guillotine, and we provide all the ministers um, for a year, so uh, we provide them with this time, and they have to pr prove to the Ministry of Economy and they should prove that it is necessary to regulate the way they regulate, otherwise it will be cancelled. Um, if they don't do anything, that will be cancelled 100%. So this is the test period, this is the grace period for them. They have to prove that it is really necessary, otherwise they will be stripped of everything they have there. And then there we need your support, your knowledge, your expertise. And you know where they have loopholes, the traps, and the um, ambushes uh, for collection of money. And where they go around with their caps in their hands. And uh, we have good people, uh, the committee, and understanding on, of the minister. SMEs, uh, all they need is love. One of the mayors told me, you're not protecting the right business. I said, uh, give me the list, the list of enterprises I should fight for. They are different. Uh, the market reformists, uh, so selling coffee in the streets, uh, uh, having stands and kiosks. To me, every marketplace vendor or uh, person with a big uh, uh, supermarket uh, is the same. If we do SMEs, we have to love them because they deserve it. Thank you, Madam Kuzel, for an interesting presentation. And uh, when the reforms are being carried out, a reform is, on the one hand, is uh, sort of a work of an, an accountant. You write the laws, draft the laws, but if you don't put your heart to it, well, it won't work. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Kuzel. I would like to give the floor to the Ministry of Economic Development and uh, Trade, Mr. Ivar Sabramavichus. 
And I know that he and his aides have drafted a speech for him, but I would like to ask him, uh, maybe at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of his speech, to answer the question when the dream of Ms. Kujil is going to become true, and we are going to love with all our hearts the small and medium-sized businesses. Good afternoon, participants of uh, uh, this event. It's a great honor for me to be present at this uh, event among so such pretty women and having huge experience uh, and uh, I have an honor in this environment to work every day and I am working with Ms. Lapina and Ms. Kujil. Well, they have 20 years of experience of work in this area. It helps a lot and it's great that we have uh, the similar vision uh, as far as the next steps are concerned, especially in the area of the regulation. Ms. Johnson, we, two weeks ago, have signed uh, with the EU Foundation uh, a, a grant agreement for $30 million. Uh, it's an unprecedented situation, and uh, there are lots of directions which are going to be covered by this grant financing, moving, uh, promoting expert of Ukraine, leadership training, and so on and so forth. Uh, I am very optimistic uh, in terms of the current situation is concerned. Well, definitely there are lots of uh, closed small businesses. Uh, they have been reduced by 10 percent. The number of small businesses, those uh, who have been working as entrepreneurs, have been decreased by 26 percent within the last three years. More than one million people. Uh, uh, have uh, uh, are no longer employed in the area of small business and the medium-sized business. But uh, spring is coming, the weather is becoming warmer, the government uh, is working very proactively together with the parliament. And according to the preliminary data, the parliament has uh, has uh, in, uh, adopted uh, just huge number of laws within this short period, and it's unprecedented. I've seen the first results, by the way. And I sm spent uh, some time in Washington, Paris, and some other places in Western Europe. And I would like to say that our Western partners can see the difference between this parliament and this government um, uh, well, versus the previous government, and they can see the initial results. I'd like to mention several aspects which were touched upon by Ms. Kujil. Yeah, the banks. There Three banks uh, have uh, been closed last year. Ten banks have been closed this year. This is a huge problem, but this is accumulation of the economic problems from the previous year. What do we have in the economy at present? 36 months. Um, the, uh, the industrial production is declining. 36 months running. There is a decline. No reforms. Absolutely no correct policies implemented, economic policies. And uh, this was the reason why we face these consequences by the less latest uh, research of the EB, uh, European Business Association and others demonstrates that if the military actions are not going to be started again, maybe we have hit the button already. We have for two months the stable rate of exchange and uh, uh, Grivna is uh, a appreciating. And the initial problem was with the rate of exchange. And that's why all the efforts of the central bank, uh, they have a great, fantastic team. No matter how much Ms. Gontreva is being criticized, uh, and um, Pisaruk and uh, other colleagues are doing a great job. It's just a dream team. And uh, here also we have to mention the law which was initiated by the central bank together with the Ministry of Finance. It has been voted for in the parliament. It's a so-called law on uh, reliability of the owners of the bank in the past. Uh, uh, well, the uh, uh, the capital was sixteen million dollars. They have collected deposits of sixty four million dollars, do and uh, through a uh, connected person, they have uh, exerted the money from the bank. And the richest people of uh, in this country are those who have uh, got the loans and never repaid it, and people who have uh, uh, 
made deposits to those banks cannot recover their deposits. And I think that the problems of the banking sector are going to be addressed in the nearest future, and we will be thinking about them soon as history. For the small and medium-sized businesses, it's extremely important. that We also have passed the law in the Parliament on the protection of the investors' right. It's an extremely important law. And here, we are going to improve our position in the review, the easiness of doing business, and maybe, maybe we can get into top 20, even due to these laws uh, being passed. And I talked to the chief economist of the World Bank in, the, um, in Washington, and uh, he said that there is no single country which does not uh, pay attention to this rating. This is really one of the most important ratings, and it indicates what is uh, the, uh, the investment climate in Ukraine and whether it is attractive for the investors. Uh, I wanted to underscore that we have challenges, and I'm absolutely confident that we are going to overcome them. For the small and medium-sized business, the regulation is the most important one. We have divided the, the regulation in three parts. Uh, to, uh, uh, to remove the excessive barriers to carrying business. This is licensing and regulation, the laws in the parliament, and also resolution of the cabinet of ministers, which deals with the agricultural producers. And three weeks ago, in the cabinet of ministers, uh, we have passed 179 initiatives. That's the, the regulation plan for the future. And uh, well, we have de decreased the number of the regulations by 130, but actually it was all in all, 170, because uh, uh, because the relevant laws in the parliament are going to be passed. If we are going to accomplish it within 12 months, and I'm sure we will, so we will move to the 20th place from the 96th place uh, in the rating of uh, the easiness of doing business environment uh, for the small and medium-sized businesses is going to change drastically. We have interesting initiatives uh, how to quickly connect to the grid. Uh, now at present, uh, people need 277 days on the average, which is abnormal. The procedure of registration of uh, property, the procedure for company registrations. Everything is going to be simplified and everything is going to be um, made more concise. I am closing now the representative office of my company here since I uh, have become a f minister and my assistant is doing it. But unfortunately, she could not cope with it because it takes too much time here. I know that it's easy to register the company. So now we are going to s simplify the procedure of closing the company so that it will be as easy as to open open one. And uh, the second part uh, of the package of the, the regulation is being discussed uh, and uh, the draft law by Oksana Proden and Ms. Kuzhin mentioned about it. Yesterday, uh, uh, Scott Jacobs came and he patented the na name of the uh, regulatory heliotin. Actually, it's his uh, uh, um, expression. He uh, worked uh, for the OECD, and he was working on these issues. And uh, he actually created regulatory guillotine in 15 countries. And he was dealing with the deregulation more than 100 countries. He's a legendary individual. He won a tender, which we have launched uh, um, to carry out a business review. So he's going to review the situation within three weeks, and he will identify the most important uh, uh, benchmarks and uh, uh, objectives. And he was usually he creates this helium within 12 months with his 33 stuff. And uh, it is not difficult to get a financing for this situation because the World Bank always supports the regulatory helium in many countries. Uh, as far as the deregulation is concerned, we have understanding what to do. There is a support of the cabinet of ministers. The prime minister said uh, of the, uh, during his first days in office, he said that this is a priority number one, the regulation, and to create the uh, conditions which for doing business which will be the best in the region, the taxation system. At this uh, point of time, it's not satisfactory, but we have uh, uh, simplified it. Now there are 11 state taxes instead of 22. Ministry of Finance created a working group, and uh, it includes Ivan Miklas, the ex-minister of finance and the vice premier of Slovakia. And he carried out very well this reform in this own country. So I have a hope that by September, there will be a consensus reached and the tax reform is going to be voted for and we are going to launch it from the 1st of January next year. I'm not going to discuss details now because this initiative is the initiative of the Ministry of Finance, but nevertheless, I'm sure that it will be based on a serious decrease of uh, the uh, rates of taxes 
and to promote the situation when the, sh the ratio of shady economy is going to be decreased. He told us how they did it in Slovakia. He developed a concept and the prime minister uh, gave him a carte blanche to implement the concept. He came to the cabinet of ministers and said, I have two options. There is a very radical one and one is more conservative. And they discussed these two options, and they voted. Two thirds were voting for a conservative option, and one third for radical one. He was sitting and thinking for a long time, and he said, um, we are now adopting the more radical one. So democratic process sometimes, uh, uh, especially under conditions like this, could be adhered to, because uh, people who are working in politics actually are very cautious, always, very conservative, always. That's why it's very good that Ivan Miklos at that time was much more radically uh, uh, um, radical than his colleagues. Uh, money now in the small and medium-sized business always needs money. And I'm from Lithuania. I left Lithuania when I was 17, and uh, I did not do any business proactively, personally, but I know what are the interest rates there. I have an apartment, and I'm asking the banker how much I pay for the loan. He said 1.18% uh, uh, your in uh, your rate is uh, interest rate. Those are the interest rates. 18, 90% of the banking sector of the Baltic states uh, belong to the Scandinavian banks. We have given up the banking sector to, uh, to the Western hands, but uh, this uh, promoted our accession to the European Union, and uh, now we have introduced the euro, and the foreign banks made this uh, financial system stable. And uh, uh, small businesses and medium-sized businesses also benefit from it. Not, not everything is that bad in this country. In December, we have signed an agreement with the European Investment Bank about the program of financing of small and medium-sized businesses for the scope of 400 million euro. And now we are discussing how this money is going to be channeled to the small and medium-sized businesses. By the end of May, together with our European partners, uh, and I have discussed that two days ago, we are going to announce one more program, 95 million euro for small and small and medium-sized businesses, 55 million euro of technical assistance, expertise to, to transfer to the European standards, and 40 million of, of loans to small and medium-sized businesses. I uh, was in Paris, and uh, I accompanied president a couple of days ago, and we were meeting with the OECD. Uh, we have uh, signed an action plan. There are 9 million euro in it, uh, 30 initiatives, and they are going to analyze uh, certain sectors in Ukraine, and they will help us to develop a strategy of support of small and medium-sized businesses and creating an agency for support of of the small and medium-sized businesses. I've been talking for a long time, but I would like to uh, make a conclusion now. We know the problems, we know the issues, uh, and uh, we also would like to invite you to a Facebook uh, of the Ministry of Economic Development. We don't forget about you. And I'm, I quite agree to what Mr. Kuzel, uh, Mrs. Kuzel says. Medium, uh, uh, middle class are the entrepreneurs. These are people with a democratic uh, mind, uh, set of mind, and they are responsible for their own well-being, their their families, and they take care of themselves. It's not like in Russia, where the middle class are all civil servants. And uh, the middle class in Ukraine is ready to develop Ukraine in a democratic way. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to give the floor to my colleagues. Thank you. And uh, I believe that everybody will agree that uh, Ivers uh, as answered uh, uh, the question I asked, that the dream is going to come true. Ms. Kuzel's dream is going to become true, yeah. And I would like to give the floor now to Ms. Ksenia Lapina. Uh, uh, there is an issue. Ksenia is representing just one uh, direction of activities in the government, but I don't think they are. Uh, I think they trust each other, so I don't think that there will be a problem if she criticizes uh, her colleagues. If, if uh, we are talking about small and medium-sized businesses, and when I've listened to these reports, it seems that we understand everything. We know the issues. We know the problems. We are resolving them. And uh, somehow, 
It has become quite a usual discussion. Ksenia, when you came to this uh, uh, position and started to work, what was the biggest enigma of Ukrainian economy you faced, including the regulatory area? Thank you. Uh, I will uh, give you an answer about the enigma at the end of my intervention. Uh, well, always the questions are being asked, what our relations with the Ministry of Economy? Uh, in the Ministry of Economy is a political, so to say, body, and it's our banner flag. And we are a donkey which is towing the cart. And this is exactly the way it should be. And it's exactly how the bodies of government, of authorities uh, uh, should be created in a normal country, which uh, Ukraine uh, aspires to become. Uh, the policies of supporting the small businesses, uh, I would like to um, uh, uh, go beyond the borders of my authority. We are a donkey who is towing a cart, but we are working in the area of deregulation. But as a politician, I've been working uh, uh, on the development and uh, uh, support of the small entrepreneurship for 20 years. There are two parts of this policy. First of all, resource part, or we, we either can provide the resources, additional resources for the development of small business. It could be financial resource, or it could be information organizational resource. For example, assistance, uh, um, stewardship of export, assistance and stewardship of some sort of a insurance schemes and things like that. And uh, this is the experience of the European countries it exists. But let us give us a honest answer. Financial resource in this country, the small and medium-sized businesses, uh, usually uh, obtain uh, in the best uh, scenario a year or 18 months after they start their business. I'm not going to be pessimistic, but I, I want to be a realist. I don't want to be over optimistic. I would like to be uh, to see the challenges and us to see the challenges. Why? Because uh, uh, actually improvement in the banking sector is going to continue. As far as the external financing, 400 million euro for support of the small entrepreneurship. It seems like huge funds, but let us uh, uh, count 2 million uh, companies, small companies. It's 200 euro per one person. And the external resources, that's great, but uh, these are the resources which are used at certain points. But we have to create Ukrainian domestic system of crediting of small and medium-sized businesses for 22 years. Realistically, we haven't done that. And the business, if we analyze its situation, uh, well, uh, could not use really the access to the credit resources. It has always been a problem, an issue. And Ms. Kuzel will not let me say a lie here. We have been discussing it for 20 years. And why did it happen? Because there were huge risks uh, uh, inherent in the economy of Ukraine, and they were covered by the interest rates. They were too high. And the resource for the small business is absolutely inaccessible with such interest rates. And uh, the small businesses could not not uh, provide collaterals uh, and security for these financial resources. The only uh, credit resources which were accessible, this was the consumer crediting. The small business, at a certain point of time, when there is the growth of economy in the year of 2007-8, uh, really strengthened with the consumer, uh, con uh, con consumer credits. But the crisis has occurred, and the credits were not secured. And you also remember what happened to the exchange rates and half of the credits uh, was done in, in foreign currency. So we can see the consequences of that. All those uh, uh, all those demonstrations of uh, the people who cannot repay their loans. Uh, tell us about that. The foreign exchange risks were not taken into account for a long time, neither by the state, nor by the bank, nor by the business. And uh, now we have the consequences of that. And uh, the banking sector is going uh, to be improved. I don't know for better or for worse, uh, but uh, this is an absolutely obvious fact that there will be very, very drastic changes. And actually, 
actually a lot of banks are going to be affected, unfortunately, or fortunately, and the small, unfortunately, the small business will again uh, will have face risks if the deposit resources more or less are insured in the uh, deposit guarantee fund, but the uh, current accounts are not being insured, and the small and medium-sized business now are complaining because they cannot guarantee their transactions uh, because they don't know which the bank is reliable. That's the question which is always being asked. Uh, they say, goodness, which is the reliable bank? We cannot give an answer to this question because the ratings which are being published by the NBU, uh, well, are not proved because, uh, well, sometimes those banks who were in good ratings uh, uh, got unsolvent. So there's this problem and uh, I pray to God that uh, we come out of this crisis, the banking crisis, not the currency crisis anymore. Um, this year, for the next year, to have to uh, more or less reliable banking system for the SMEs to understand that they do not risk their turning capital, but for small and micro businesses, uh, uh, this uh, is, uh, the working capital is uh, blood and flesh of their lives uh, because they cannot uh, rely on any lending. So there's this big challenge that should be answered somehow. Now with the second part for support policy. For some means it's also about resources, but vice versa. We have to do everything for SMEs not to be deprived of their resources. They should stay with their resources. They should not be stripped of them and develop indirectly without taking anything away. The state uh, will make an investment for the future. And this deregulation that we have discussed at such length is uh, uh, the leaving the resources with the SMEs. Um, uh, the regulation should be done with the main mission to make uh, less expensive compliance uh, with all the administrative procedures that should be complied with by SMEs, first of all. And I have a very simple answer to the key question of this panel. That was how we should implement in real terms our declarations on how much we love SMEs. Because we all love SMEs, but this love should not uh, make them suffocate in our embrace. Because uh, after 22 years we've had this uh, uh, specific kind of love on the part of the state, on the part of the government. We have a very simple answer to that, and we're working on it together with the Tamara Solanix project and CSC project, and um, with the ministry, I hope we will have some cooperation, close cooperation on that. We would like to introduce a small business test in Ukraine. Any project um, of uh, regulatory draft, sorry, of regulatory policy, cancellation, introduction of some draft, of some regulation should be calculated as far as the impact is concerned. This is my question to Igor's uh, uh, answer to Igor's question. What's the biggest uh, mystery to me in this executive process? It's how the government can use uh, trial and error to find some answers, some some solutions, because there are no tabulations, no calculations, but the budgetary uh, developments, uh, the Ministry of Finance do it for themselves. But uh, the owners uh, should calculate and the Ministry of Finance uh, do the same thing for the budget. But are there any uh, losses incurred for businesses? It's never calculated. Though uh, for the law, it's been clear for a long time. And we have to answer this and to solve this mystery and to introduce uh, calculation of losses, the impact on um, a regulation uh, with the regulation of SMEs, especially small business. If something uh, makes it cheaper to operate, so we have to calculate the percentage. 
the Euro, uh, European approach was this. By 25 percent, they decided to make uh, um, better uh, regulations better, less expensive, and the result of that was that all the European institutions that were developing drafting regulations calculated the impact in terms of funding, not for the budget, but for businesses themselves and their their costs and their capital. So we suggest a more ambitious task. By 50%, we have to cut the expenses of administrative compliance for SMEs. And this should be calculated. And for any step of the executive power and legislative power, for that matter, because this is even more important, the latter are very emotional in many developments, no calculations whatsoever in too many cases. So we would like to provide them with a toolkit so that every action is justified, substantiated, as far as the impact is concerned. One simple example, we were all applauding uh, reform of, the, of higher education. It looked like the law was uh, driving us towards European standards. Now we have the conflict of two laws, the brand new law on licensing uh, that uh, is uh, aimed at making uh, compliance uh, less expensive and the law on higher education that introduces uh, a very high barrier as far as costs uh, are concerned. Uh, the pre-license expert examination that is not uh, um, stipulated by the license law, the new law. And this should be solved not in an emotional way, in terms of likes or dislikes, who prefers business and who prefers education. We have to calculate the impact and of this regulation, or such and such regulations. But there are very simple, um, simple examples where regulatory, regulatory uh, service used to be the regulating service, but recently we used our powers under the law on uh, governmental regulatory policy to cancel certain orders of certain services and ministries for that matter and we canceled the uh, state uh, state uh, service for extraordinary situation that where they uh, emergency situations where they demanded certain payments from SMEs working in the area of firefighting and we cancelled that and cal calculated that was in terms of resources uh, retained by business 250 million hryvnias just one line in the rules one line one single line and its cancellation provided the resource for the companies at 250 million hryvnias and that's the way for us to proceed uh, uh, Minister didn't mention it, but I think this is one of the most successful developments with the government. This is cancellation of uh, Regulation 919 on recycling of uh, packaging. And uh, for uh, 10 years we discussed that, and there was no political will to find some way out of that endless discussion to collect the money without recycling, recycle somehow. So, um, uh, this is exactly this is about the regulation. Emotion must think calculation is a different kettle of fish. So now uh, we cancel because there was no recycling whatsoever, and that was proved with facts. What's happening now? Now we have this very positive process. It's uh, on our site. The uh, memorandum is posted there. Mm, big companies signed it. Uh, and But this is about SMEs. But SMEs uh, retain and accumulate the resources. But the big companies signed uh, that memorandum on being ready to pay. Uh, uh, in, and they're not just ready, they have created under the leadership of EBA, the uh, European Business Association, the fund, uh, and they will make contributions to it, uh, self-governed it will be, 
the European the Czech model that we are using for that purpose and they will conclude contracts with local civil governments for separation of uh, of uh, on the packaging materials and then they will be sold for utilization to the uh, um, garbage processing facilities. And this is how uh, this should uh, be done for authorities, governments, in other words, and business. That will be the modern state-of-the-art European model. I'm not over-optimistic there. But I'm not also pessimistic. I see some progress and I see some effective progress uh, along the European lines at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just one second, Ksenia. Uh, we uh, have. Uh, we are not lecturing here. We are not presenting. This is a conversation. I understand. The most important thing, and perhaps you failed to mention that, but. Uh, Ivara should listen to that. You are in breach of, uh, of, of the law on um, basic grounds for regulatory policy. As minister, in your capacity, I attended all the governmental meetings. The impact, regulatory impact, should be evaluated. There's some uh, some uh, agenda, then the miscellaneous. Uh, and uh, something is uh, cut off, something is added. Uh, you have to dismiss a couple of people for their failure to comply with the regulatory policy. And another point, um, you have to take uh, on uh, uh, of electronic keys. Uh, I have uh, received the calculations, corruption again. Each body creates uh, their own uh, spin-offs and uh, companies have to pay for that even for the report on uh, uh, electric energy supplies so 157 minutes for the key there's no tax for the key no tax no tax for the key and uh, i would like to tell you uh, and illustrate it with example for you to understand that every matter concerning regulation is uh, always disputable. I was against cancellation of resolution 915. I talked to the minister, I tried to prove it's uh, a shame, but in 2001, uh, President Kuchma provided the opportunity uh, for me not to sign any regulations unless I sign it off. Uh, the method of recycling uh, packaging materials in all of the countries, they pay this tax everywhere, in every single jurisdiction. Back in 2001, 14 years ago, we broke it down for them. Number one, you can utilize yourselves. Secondly, you can create joint ventures and do it jointly. And if you uh, choose uh, neither option, you pay to uh, to uh, make a contest and decide. And what happened next? Uh, 14 years later, uh, so people would uh, take the money. It's not the regulation. It's uh, the management and control. And Tetra Pak, uh, they are quite happy after these years, and they have come back to recycle norms like 14 years ago. We started with 1% of all the packaging materials, 3%, 5%, 14 years. And the country is being garbage with the packaging material, uh, being, uh, uh, um, being uh, buried in it. Tetra Pak uh, takes uh, uh, 300 years to decompose uh, paper and glass are being collected. And association uh, uh, of this topic uh, as a subject matter for for the for the uh, packaging material this is not for EBA this is not uh, uh, this is 
Well, in all the countries, uh, it's the same, the same kind of arrangement. The regulation is dangerous. You can see that it's quite ambiguous. You can see the hot discussions here. But I would like to reiterate, uh, business Tetra Pak is a good business. It's not. It's not our enemy. It's not our adversary. Regulatory policy. A regulatory policy, it's in the law. Have you read the law? What is, what is it? It's parity between uh, the business, uh, consumer, and authorities. And I would never give you any um, drafts on taxi drivers, on movers. It's not about uh, business. If you have a, have a, a cafe, you go to the pharmacy and you are a consumer again. So I'm a consumer. I live in the country. I do not want uh, to well, the uh, plastic bags to fly around and uh, don't garbage Ukraine. That's my motto. So the mission is to develop the European model without uh, any uh, plastic butterflies flying around. On the contrary, uh, so basically balance equilibrium based on the European experience. You should not re reinvent the wheel and this, has been, this uh, was done before you. Uh, unfortunately, yes indeed, we have this big problem and neither the parliament nor the government uh, calculate. So I'm addressing you, all of you, especially. This is uh, being an economic conference. I'm addressing you, the floor, the audience. Please help us with the calculations. Yes, um, it's again uh, uh, reinventing the wheel. And Europe, uh, they do it with the associations and unions. Um, we have this big article with the U European Truth, Europejska Pravda, uh, for advancement of uh, Ukraine with the reforms. And the European Commission uh, never take any decision unless it's uh, uh, evaluated and all calculated with the European Business Association. So we are approaching such standards. Thank you very much. Indeed, you can see that we have lots of topics that are hot by definition. On the other hand, we can say that our life is difficult. Nevertheless, uh, we have to take decisions and uh, implement them. Uh, so, Senior uh, Lapinam uh, and Alexander Kuzin convinced me that the decisions should be implemented. We don't implement them. Uh, we have to look for new solutions, and we are entangled because the regulation is not just cutting the red tapes, but also with the compliance of the good uh, uh, resolutions. Uh, for SMEs also. Let's uh, divert our conversation from this topic. Another uh, more general topic. I would have started this discussion. This is about cash. This is a uh, sheer pleasure to discuss uh, cash and it has no implications. Bad implications with the plastic uh, garbage and all that. So with my great pleasure I would like to turn the floor to Yaroslav Johnson uh, from from uh, um, uh, uh, um, um, I would like to ask her to pay attention to two things. Number one, we are interested in uh, the cash being spent properly if we have any revenues. And Ivar's uh, minister was discussing that so uh, that we managed to engage. 550, 10 million, uh, 1 billion, it's good to have resources if we can engage them. But the resources uh, tend to expire because they uh, 
obtaining a specific owner, a Ukrainian owner. And such Ukrainian owners are not uh, terribly economical, usually. How can we use your money with the best uh, possible outcome? Thank you very much uh, for your uh, words. I think I am the only person who has uh, direct uh, experience with many SMEs because our foundation was created in 1994 by the American Congress uh, uh, House of Representatives. For 20 years I was on the board, the investment committee of the board, and uh, um, Natalia Ureski became Minister of Finance and I took over. Uh, so this is one of the ten uh, funds uh, funded by the American government and the specific mission was to invest to SMEs. In the, in the post-Soviet countries, our foundation had 150 million capital, which we were supposed to invest into SMEs in Ukraine, Moldova, and Belarus. Belarus was not the case, so we were investing in Ukraine and Moldova. And our foundation had to be a venture capital at the time when there was no venture capital in Ukraine at all. Nobody wanted to invest in Ukraine. And we had to invest this money so that not only to get some revenues, but also in profits, and also get some impact on the development of the country. And as a result, our organization has the biggest experience in Ukraine and Moldova, uh, the biggest experience of work with the SMEs. Uh, during the 20 years of our existence, we have invested 197 million into 118 enterprises. Those enterprises, um, had 25,000 jobs, and each enterprise has become the center of local development in the communities where they were located. As a result, they were buying services and goods from the neighbors, and this was a very positive phenomenon for the communities which surrounded them. But it was not an easy task to perform. We were working hard. We had lots of sleepless nights, and there were lots of tears shed while we were working there. First of all, we were trying uh, to give our enterprises the best uh, practices. Uh and bring them from the United States and from the Western world, the corporate governance, uh, quality control, fiscal management, uh, and uh, other services. We also mentored our enterprises uh, to all the companies we invested in, and we participated proactively in the work of their supervisory boards and uh, executive boards. We had more than 1,000 conferences carried out dedicated to various topics. We which dealt with the uh, business. And our uh, graduates, our alumni, now are the heads of the companies in Ukraine and uh, in the financial sector, in mass media, and uh, are working even abroad as well. We, Our activities uh, as an investing, in, investing fund uh, was completed in 2013, when we have uh, uh, opened the new fund, Horizon Capital Foundation, and the management was shifted there. But uh, the Horizon Capital was selling our company, and we uh, actually made a lot of money. And now we have six companies which we are going to sell. Uh, the new phase of our activities, we are going to use the funds which we've earned in those enterprises and $30 million, which I have to use uh, for Ukrainian and Moldovan projects, uh, is a result of our past work. A month ago, I signed an agreement with the minister. And in this agreement, we have identified four specific programs which we are going to use and implement for the SMEs. The first program is the economic leadership. Uh, Ukraine really lacks young people who will be ambitious and who will be good managers of the enterprises and the government institutions as well. And the program is going to have the following components, uh, the scholarships uh, to study 
study in the best Euro uh, 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 universities uh, of the United States. Uh, the uh, study tours of uh, the uh, young entrepreneurs of Ukraine, 18, 20 years entrepreneurs. We are going to take them to the Silicon, Silicon Valley. Uh, and these are the people who have specific projects. And we are going to arrange meetings uh, with the American entrepreneurs, international entrepreneurs, so that they can imagine how the business should operate. And these young people will come back to Ukraine and will continue working here. Now, we also have a program of export promotion. We know that Ukraine has lost a lot of the markets in Ukraine. And Ukraine has to look for new markets for the products outside this country. And we are working with the ministry to create uh, the uh, relevant uh, trading policy for Ukraine and on the basis of these policies uh, to develop new markets. Uh, uh, one more thing which we are interested in, we understand that our Ukrainian entrepreneurs and small entrepreneurs do not know how to enter the export market. So we are going to help them to do that by training them at the seminars, training programs. Uh, uh, we are going to start a web page and also the internet tools for them to understand how to access the markets in, in which countries. Those markets are available. Another program is about investing into the companies which are which are working uh, in a social sphere. Those are the companies which are working with women, uh, military men who came from ATO and cannot find a job, also disabled people, and uh, the IDPs as well. Uh, these are going to be very small enterprises, so we are going to finance them, uh, uh, providing them uh, the interestless loans. And the last program we have uh, is engaged in local economic development. And this is where we are going to consolidate all the efforts of the cities, uh, villages, uh, uh, management of the state companies to resolve the problems of the cities. Uh, you were asking me uh, uh, how we are going to properly use the funds. Um, we are going to carry out audits. As everything is going to be absolutely transparent. And uh, we will know who we are financing and what interest rates are. And uh, we would like uh, to uh, uh, to assure you that this money is going to be properly used. We also would like to involve our entrepreneurs uh, uh, and financial institutions into our work, and we would like to support them. But we would like these funds uh, to be used within the next three years. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you were saying that, well, you have seen that business and money are usually speaking very specifically on, well, and uh, they stick to the topic. And so we hope that this program is going to be effectively uh, implemented. So now we are going to discuss the second part of uh, our panel. Well, questions and answers, comments uh, from the floor. I also would like to participate in the discussion, but to demonstrate that I'm very autocratic, but nevertheless, I have some traits of democ democracy. So let us, uh, first of all, take the questions from the floor. Give a couple of questions from the floor. You will tell who you are asking this question. And uh, thus, uh, we will be able to ask more questions, and more panelists will be able to discuss the issues. Please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are asking, and then we will proceed. Uh, uh, after Kuchma, uh, well, nobody is recording. Nobody is recording statements in this country after the uh, private discussions of Mr. Kuchma in his office were recorded, after this tape recorder scandal. I sat next to Ms. Kuzhul five years ago in Odessa, and I represent the transport organization of Odessa. Five years ago, uh, then behind us, uh, there were uh, uh, the, there was a demonstration of uh, the uh, drivers of the trucks. Yeah, You remember that uh, we were dealing with that uh, uh, demonstration uh, both in Odessa and Kiev. And uh, five years ago, and within these uh, uh, five years period, nothing has been changed. Out of, uh, one, uh, out of 10 thousand uh, uh, drivers of the trucks, now maybe a couple of hundred only operate. Mm -hmm. 
We cannot translate because there is no microphone. I know what is going on. They are depriving them from uh, the permits and the banks are confiscating the trucks. Uh, yesterday I spent one hour in the ministry uh, with the first deputy minister and uh, we, were, I, uh, uh, he, we were asking what's Avaris, uh, uh, who, which was a parasite on this business, uh, actually can operate and you cannot cancel the state enterprise which was a parasite on the business. Uh, we have liquidated SMAP, but at present they cannot enter the port and they cannot use the scale the private company is collecting the money for weighing the trucks. So help us to start a dialogue. We should not start a dialogue, but just sit down and put it on paper. I was at this meeting. Mr. Kostyuchenko was speaking there in a very old Soviet fashion. And he was telling people things, but nobody, well, we were telling him, but he was not listening to us. So you have to uh, put a request. You should change this and this, and we give you the, this deadline. This is the way we should do. Remember, when we have uh, actually canceled six or seven resolutions when this crisis in the transportation sector uh, emerged. This is the way, well, it doesn't operate because the minister works that way. I know this topic. It, this resolution has been drafted so that it gives an opportunity not to work. No, it, it has to be adjusted. Uh, just please give us, submit the pro proposal. We can, within the, the regulation, can take a decision. Now, Ivaris is going to help us and we will be able to pass it. Okay, thank you. Young lady over there. Mm -hmm. We would like to thank you very much uh, for this discussion. Uh, Ms. Alexander, I would like to thank you very much because you know that for you were the first uh, during this uh, conference uh, to tell us about the realistic situation in Ukraine. And that's why the reaction was so good. And uh, the question to the minister, to you, and whoever wants to ask from the presidium, National Institute of Strategic Studies, uh, I represent, well, there was a discussion for a certain period of time, or even for many years, whether it's necessary for us to have a Ministry of Economy. Well, now, I've been sitting and listening. The money is there, the deputies who care. There is a committee which is doing something, and nobody can count. The audience has to count. Uh, you have been a minister for five months, uh, and the Ministry of Economy in general, uh, does Ukraine need the Ministry of Economy? Or or not. Uh, one more question, so to make our uh, our discussion more dynamic, but short questions, please, so that we have an opportunity to answer. Andrei Giglan, company, Gidulan company, SME Banking Club. I'm an expert in finance. In the, Mr. Minister, I would like to support those initiatives you're starting and the messages that you gave us. But I would like to share a couple of uh, ideas with you. When we are going uh, to see the situation when uh, the business is not going uh, to be, to be to exercise pressure on the small businesses. I am a representative of the micro business and we feel the pressure all the time. Uh, give me an opportunity to ask the question. Let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. One sec. Uh, well, may I ask the question? And my question is the following. When we are going to see not the pressure against the business, but specific targeted programs of support on small and medium-sized businesses. 12 months ago, an independent banking association together with the Ministry of Economy and with the support, our SME Banking Club, Association of uh, uh, Banking Experts met the commercial banks. Commercial banks 
who are financing small SMEs. They said we have four targeted programs which we are ready to support, agro, export, franchising, and uh, the domestic manufacturer. Three targeted programs which uh, might uh, provide some economic growth, but uh, we uh, see that the number of enterprises is decreasing within the last uh, year. And uh, oh, M Ms. Yaroslava, maybe you will be interested in what I'm going to say. In 2011, there was a USAID project uh, to support uh, $105 million. Uh, and the bank was provided this money, $150 million, to develop SMEs. And I can tell you which banks are working with the small business. So please, if there are targeted programs for the small businesses are being financed, give the money to those who are working with the small businesses in the banking sector. Thank you. Question answers. Naivaras, Alexander. And then we will take some questions from the floor. Thank you for the questions. The first question was whether the Ministry of Economy is necessary for Ukraine. There are the countries where there are no ministries of economy, but there are countries where there is a Ministry of Economy. And it's absolutely obvious that the Ministry of Economy has too much function, too many functions, 247. Too many documents are being processed. Last year it was like 200,000, uh, two. 2,400, something like that. So we have to identify priorities and focus on them. So the monastery has to be decreased. It is going to be decreased. Some functions are going to be delegated. And we would like this ministry to become a ministry dealing with the reforms, uh, promoting export, and other things. And as for the credits and the banks, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, there are several problems and issues, and it's not possible just to accuse government or banks. When the countries are uh, in crisis, uh, 2008, 9, all the countries, all the banks, first of all, stopped lending. In our banking sector, at present, the liquidity is on record level. The banks have nobody to finance. There are no well-developed projects, well-prepared projects. The banks are apprehensive uh, because bad debts have increased uh, very dramatically. And there are two problems. Business uh, has deteriorated, and the situation has deteriorated, and the profit has decreased. And unfortunately, there are the, uh, the borrowers in bad face. Uh, and how can we explain the situation with the agro company Maria? They have borrowed one billion two hundred million dollars. They defaulted, and the whole country is suffering. It was just a pure fraud, and uh, all the creditors, very respectable uh, creditors of the world, to come to the president's administration, and they say to the government, "If you don't put, uh, or just imprison them, we are not going to credit your country. Neither small nor medium-sized businesses, nor the state." So we do have the problem with the. Uh, 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 integral borrowers. Uh, SMEs, the banks also suffers in any country during the crisis because SMEs uh, usually faces the problems of the collaterals. Uh, when the SMEs borrow and cannot repay, uh, usually a small business does not have any assets. Uh, just a store or whatever, what the bank is going to take as a collateral, just the shoes or the store or whatever. Unfortunately, the portfolio of the bad debts during the crisis usually is very big in the segment of the SMEs. That's why the situation, the, the, the biggest repayments during the crisis is done by the SMEs. It's 98% repayment. Medium and small businesses are repaying. Well, it seems that we have moved into the parliament. Let us stick to the conference issues. Uh, the first question, Ministry of Economy is very much needed in Ukraine. Ministry of Finance, uh, uh, which is considered to be very important in this government, I think it's like a counting office. 
and it uh, should not uh, work with the taxation policy and things like that. It is just an accounting office. And the Ministry of Economy and the Cabinet Ministers should be the most important. It's forecast economic analysis. And if economic analysis uh, uh, told us that five uh, or 10 percent of import duties will bring uh, destructive effects, uh, then it should not have been introduced. If the Ministry of Economy, while submitting the draft budget for 2015, would not uh, um, uh, would not just change uh, the single tax, well, uh, ye, ye, uh, well, uh, it's a new consistent that it would be introduced starting from 2016, but the business is apprehensive of it starting from 2015. Ministry of Economy had to be the first to say, I am not going to let you do that unless I can see the uh, uh, the uh, verified ter tariffs. I want to know what is the cost, what is profitability rate, and if there is no planning, I can tell you for sure because I'm an economist. If there is no estimates of the economic expediency, then what Xenia, uh, Xenia was talking about, it, there are, oh, well, the uh, detrimental steps are being taken. So the Ministry of Economy has to be uh, the most important, and not enforcement agency have to lead, but just as far as RRO is concerned, when you are uh, starting uh, to uh, 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 to uh, to say uh, bad things about the parliament, well, I won't let you do it. You have elected those politicians. You have what you have elected. So I won't let you to abuse the parliament. Look, look at what people were voting for. Look at the deputies who were voting for. Prodan and myself have submitted the draft law three months ago to cancel this norm. About the banks. I know this uh, microcrediting very well. Back in 2004, I prepared a joint uh, resolution of the National Bank and the government then to open the lending facility. The National Bank did not want to deal with that. So, thanks God, the banks uh, realized that in all the uh, countries of the world, this was the biggest uh, growth segment with the customers and there was that demand uh, for the person in that position to have no banking experience. Uh, they earmarked um, agriculture and export, everything is fine there. They have, we have billionaires there. They, uh, like patrons of our restaurant, they uh, say, do you need support? Another is uh, empty. They will not give a lending facility to them. So we have to provide lending not for the figments of imagination, but for the success, uh, because it's uh, on entrepreneurship. This is uh, God's giving. And I remember then uh, f first uh, Vice Prime Minister Zara said, what franchising is? Can you change it, uh, substitute it for something more Ukrainian? And uh, Banks have to provide lending not to the dreamers, uh, like sitting as um, buy some tables and chairs from me. Why should I? You do not support small and medium enterprises, said he. So what's happening there? I took thirty thousand, uh, opened opened a um, uh, shop uh, for chairs and tables, but nobody needs them. And with Ivaras, we discussed that it's very difficult for the Ministry of Econo Economy to support um, small and medium enterprises. This is uh, education, this is expert markets, uh, this is everything having to do with the hints, with the clues. Mm. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Just a second. Uh, you called me a dictatorship, uh, a dictator. I'm a dictator. They call me that all the time. I can interrupt you and you cannot. I couldn't. I failed. Just listen. It's not just Russia. You remember the biggest crisis there. I came to her commander. She was being uh, dismissed. Uh, she was shocked. The only, the only segment that survived was small businesses. They adjusted the prices. So uh, uh, they 
they have repaid all the loans. You remember the Nobel Prize winner from uh, to Bangladesh, and uh, because for providing micro micro lending for the people uh, with the. Uh, Ninety percent repaid, and uh, Sviatosh MP took a loan in, with the French bank. Uh, does not want to repay it, uh, and in other countries he cannot but repay. And he said uh, he is in charge of the French Ukrainian group. I cannot uh, shake hands with him, and he robbed the French bank. So. Just try not to repay a um, loan. You will be deprived of your property as a small business person. But he is immune to that. Mr. Sviatosh. That is. The mic here. Be fast, please, because we have no time. Um, um, Madam Kuzel, uh, um, uh, power of the country. Ukrainian NGO. We respect his professional as a, an economist um, at that, as a practitioner. Here's the question uh, What's happening to um, the uh, sanatoria, to resort, to our resorts, and what will happen to this uh, uh, sector? Will it uh, go bust or something? And is there any draft for development of this area? Ukraine. Very shortly come to me. Nobody takes care of that. So we have a very interesting girl uh, from some point for hospitality. And um, you're talking about private business. We have to look um, on that uh, with the land issues involved and this thing, governmental. Issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pass the mic, please. Denis Nizov, uh, Project for Support of Reforms in Agriculture and Land Relations. I'd like to ask Mrs. Kuzel and uh, Minister about the priorities that uh, you can see in development of SMEs. Uh, thank you. Just one more question we'll take from the floor. Anastasia Zarubina, uh, the macroeconomic issue. Do you think that uh, the only solution for support of SMEs um, for the economy in Ukraine to develop in the uh, long term is decentralization of power for the regions like the states and the United States to compete, um, for the municipalities to have a simplified version of the tax system. And the judiciary will become more attractive. So in order to uh, follow some script, Ivaris, uh, Xenia, and then um, Alexander. Speaking of hospitality or tourism, uh, I disagree that nobody takes care of that. Uh, uh, in terms of tourism, uh, we uh, keep it high on our agenda. Ten uh, days ago, before my departure from Washington, we concluded uh, independent competition for the managers of the state-run um, uh, assets. So the best uh, presentations were uh, selected with the Kiev School of Economics. This is not used for the growth of the economy. Overlooked. Speaking of land reform. Um, I've discussed that. I uh, understand the uh, topic. My wife is involved in that business. I understand the topic. Uh, there are serious problems with the lease of land uh, from the uh, governmental point of view and from the point of view of uh, prospects uh, for such lease. They would like to improve the situation, but as far as I understand, they haven't managed yet. Next um, week, we'll have this meeting with Mr. Polenko and Mr. Zubko to understand why it doesn't happen. We have six million hectares of land with the government. Six, six. Now, the agricultural lands. What can we do that? This is the cash buried. Mm, and uh, 50 uh, dollars per hectare, 300 million dollars uh, of revenues uh, 
possibly, but uh, they have some some kind of false farmers, and uh, uh, for cash they trade their plots uh, to agricultural holdings, something medical integrated holdings. Nothing, nothing uh, is um, received by the state. Some local. Uh, um, bureaucrats get the money, we can have an auction competition, a long term lease arrangement. $50 per hectare um, uh, with a 10 year contract, $100 because um, the rights uh, can be traded, are tradable up to 1000 per hectare in good um, areas. And there uh, we can do that. So, this is the minimum for the state, and then through the regulation. Uh, according to uh, certificates, fitter, sanitary certificates and other opportunities uh, to help farmers uh, in the country through the regulation. We have an enormous, the enormous number of uh, veterinaries, if you want to sell a pig or something, but they never come to you. You have 400 minutes and it uh, costs 40 minutes. That's we know the subject very well, and I think we'll go on with this, uh, supporting farmers. In terms of lending, we'll need uh, individual programs there, and uh, we are building up the strategy for development, uh, with the, uh, access to, to all the necessary institutions education and so on, networks as we call them, access to capital, the priority should be given to innovative companies, companies that do IT, ICT, green businesses and all that, and access to public procurements, uh, it should be simplified for SMEs and also incentives for that. How is this done abroad? We have some people here, uh, uh, so uh, you give uh, some money in Sweden to uh, your uh, to your child, uh, your son, your daughter, and they start trading. They understand uh, the business uh, and in, uh, an internet sh shop for skateboards or something. So this is in the in people's DNA, it starts from early childhood and the tax system is adjusted to the situation. I was uh, hired uh, by one of the companies. If you are a uh, head hand, uh, you cannot uh, be rich. Uh, you get a little bit more, the highest tax follows. The company pays 40% of the social contribution. But if you're an entre entrepreneur, this is a total different tax base, and you can uh, be rich, get rich, uh, so you have to proceed along those long lines in the long run. We have already implemented some of the first part, but not the second part. Um, the tax system it's, it's, uh, half, is halfway there. We have taken away everything from the uh, workforce. The regulation, just a couple words. Number one, the regulation, decentralization are two different processes. You have to remember that that's one thing. I am in favor of the regulation. The regulation uh, removes the red tapes and decentralization moves them to the local down to the local level of the competition among all these communities and we hope for that but um, from experience we can say that at the local level um, quality of regulatory activities and activities uh, with the service provisions, public services and uh, administrative services, permitting all that. This is a big challenge, to put it mildly. Kiev alone can be easily imagined. Kiev, uh, from the point of view of local self-governance and uh, regulatory powers. This is the worst imaginable subject, ignoring all the regulatory policy, the laws. Uh, they adopt decisions that they are then cancelled by courts, and they immediately adopt a similar thing, the same thing basically. 
but for local civil governments this is the only solution, it's just courts. Because local civil governance uh, is uh, uh, the um, uh, supreme power uh, within certain limits and the limits uh, are uh, crossed regularly, violated. So, this is a very important process of the regulation of the European country. We have to submit ourselves to that and we'll, we shall. But this is not just a slogan. This is a complicated process for reform and this is not just passing the powers, transferring them and uh, let uh, business people then uh, approach the local uh, uh, actors. They should have uh, enough powers since then uh, to operate. Uh, if we provide them with the toolkit uh, just to squish some money out of the people, that would, will definitely not improve the business climate. The regulation comes first. And if we see that this uh, can be taken as a product and uh, given to local authorities and we can help uh, them with the administration of it, yes, decentralization will follow. And it's uh, already unfolding. But uh, we have this budgetary centralization and we can say that uh, the uh, mayors are not uh, advocating for that, but they have an additional resource. By 30% more they have for their own resource, for their own for their own purposes than a year ago and before that. Uh, so they have the money to improve uh, business conditions for the local community. But is this really so? In fact, uh, is there any boom? And the local uh, elections should answer the question. We have to see local representatives and municipalities becoming uh, something uh, reliable. People look up to the government, to the parliament, but in fact um, uh, the further into decentralization the more important municipalities uh, become. And we need people there who are capable of implementing their powers, not uh, creating some additional red tapes. Thank you very much. Our time is up. Nevertheless, I would like to turn the floor to Alexander Kuzula. After that, we will uh, make um, a very uh, concise summary. In terms of land, I am prepared to uh, help. Vadim Ivchenko is a good expert. We have it. Uh, and we uh, have uh, 11.59. This is one of the drafts to remove. Uh, Corruption from uh, State Committee of Lands, 16 uh, billion hectares. Million, 16 million hectares. Land. It's in BCMs, yes. And uh, I would like to say that this is idle. This is all kicked back and forth. And uh, speaking of what Ivaris mentioned, this 1580 resolution that he eradicated, um, uh, well, um, prevented me from eradicating and He says that it is uh, not um, possible, it was not possible. That possible, that was your draft. We did that with you, with the agricultural people. Here's the suggestion, how we conducted regulation in uh, urban development. We. Uh, uh, took a sheet of paper and uh, we went down the list with the regulation, the um, bribes and the size of bribes and the bribers and the takers. Uh, so I am against the sell sales of land because I know personally I talked to, to the uh, governor in China. He said, uh, Madam Kujal, we, uh, uh, the party loan, decided to, to buy uh, land in China for any money, but in Chernihiv, they uh, uh, 
So, no, so it, um, maize and uh, that was for biofuel. They were still, but it cannot be handled without gloves. And who will uh, reinstate the fertility of land? Uh, so our land is like oil. If we give uh, to smart people management through PPPs, uh, there are some constraints in the world. No water, no food. If we have food, uh, with our uh, black soils will be the richest country. Um, we cannot uh, uh, leave it to the people who will just grow rice and maize uh, for biofuel with uh, the uh, groundwaters polluted forever. And this uh, has nothing to do that um, decentralization is not the notion. Notion is responsibility. If some mayor is, um, is uh, evaluated according to the number of jobs created, the same is true of the governor. If uh, they are uh, assessed and evaluated by business people, uh, the conditions they create, uh, the uh, bribery and corruption schemes um, you should refer this issue to the accounting chamber they all make the money on tariffs because all the marketplaces belong to the uh, warm circle and uh, they are captive and uh, this is not just about decentralization because now um, I w was one of the um, people who uh, changed the situation with Gasks. Because uh, um, uh, we had the situation when the governor's door was uh, kicked open by uh, managers of such entities. We need uh, this big control of mayors. This is combating corruption, this is transparency. In the delegation of the provision of services, administrative services, uh, this should be done uh, in the local communities so that uh, the old woman uh, who wants uh, to be his to her landlord should do it at the site but not go to the oblast center. For SMEs, is the most important thing is the following, and I will share my feeling about it with you. Uh, we really need uh, some uh, transparency in uh, this area. If we do have judicial system and proper court hearings uh, and if people don't bribe police uh, and um, the prosecutors and now the police also is actually exerting money from people. We need transparency and clear water to wage small businesses. And the the business should not be for the authorities' sake, but the authorities are for the sake of the small business. The parliament, the government, the president, governors, mayors, they have to listen uh, to the businesses and they have to provide services to them, to the consumers and people who are unable to work, disabled, unprotected children, vulnerable groups. This is the way the system operates in the whole world, but it's not the other way around. I am always looking for new ideas. Um, when I developed the single tax and people did not believe that it uh, will be so beneficial for the country, but it did. I did not think and even didn't hope that this uh, single tax would work more than for five years. I thought about five years period and I thought that uh, during these five years people will be able uh, to uh, do accounting and the system, transparent system of uh, taxation would be created. But before we can cancel the simplified taxes. We have to teach people how to do accounting, uh, just to introduce very simple administrating, but corruption schemes and things like that, and customs authorities. All these components are interlocated. I'm sorry Makarinka was dismissed. This was the person who really was very effective in the commission which was working under Ivaris. We visited a with him when we carried out a meeting there. 
you know, the vultures in the customs service, police, uh, security services, uh, tax administration, repre representatives of the mayor and the governor, all of them are exerting money from the customs service. If anybody will have the right to enter the customs service buildings apart uh, from uh, the customs office well it well it will never be transparent to resolve these problems we have to really understand what is this and we have to love those for whom uh, we are resolving these problems so with love to you thank you goodbye we had quite an intensive session, a couple of words, because our colleagues and organizers are concerned of us, of us abusing the time. This session was organized uh, with the help of the USAID program Leadership in Economic Governance. This is one of the big projects uh, which support SMEs. And we are very happy that in this project we cooperate with such people as Ms. Alexander, Mr. Ivarus, Ksenia Lapina, and those whom we know for a long time. And we are going to establish contacts for the future. Uh, happiness is possible, and I think that we will be able to address all the problems uh, at uh, jointly, and I would like to thank all the speakers, Alexander, I, Mr. Ivarus, Ms. Ksenia, Ms. Yaroslava, first of all, for their sincerity, honesty, and not simply interesting ideas, but all of them really care about our common cause. Long live small and medium-sized business.